This is, my, this is my place. You know, this is my place. Facts, you know, facts. All the jewels. I make all the jewels here, you know. <laughs> I, see, I, see the, I see the plaques, brother. Yes, sir. Plaques. Yeah. That's what's going on. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, welcome back. Hopefully, hopefully. Just flow right here. Now, if you've been tuned into the show for the last five years, you should know by now. We're very early on a lot of people. We got the return of one of the hell, one of the best amazing producers. But we're going to get into the introduction before. So my guys like don't like to show their faces now. But let me tell you this. Their skills mm -hmm. on the microphone, their skills on production are completely undeniable right now. Now, this first guest I'm going to introduce, man, he a man of many mysteries right now. But we're going to get to know a little bit more about him. Or we're not going to blow the whole thing off the cats. So, man, the first time I ever heard of this gentleman, I was like, I think last year, man, I was going through, you know, some blogs, and I keep seeing this, you know, this name. I'm like, oh, this name just sounds the hell out. So I was very intrigued about, you know, getting in tune with this artist right now. And after, you know, building with him for a while now, I'm like, damn, he's just like me. So, yo, I'll, without further introduction, man, this is one of the most elite spitters out there right now. I'd like to in introduce my guy, Vegas 7 to Rowan. Yes, sir, man. Salute, brother. What's going on? Humble oh, to be here, man. Glad to grace the platform, bro. Yes, sir. Hey, hey we'll get into that in a minute. And then hailing from Germany right here, man. This guy was already, you know, uh, past guest on the show, man. He was one of my, I think he was like my guest 34 when I only had two phones. But, yo, we upgraded. You can actually see what he looks like. Kind of, you know, I don't think Superior even showed his face last time, you know, we, we talked. But, man. Like you said, he's hailing from Germany, man. And let me tell you this, the impact that he's making in North America with Esty Nat, the Edos, man, this guy gave us a Stove God EP when we're feeding for that, you know, you know, sophomore album. Without further introduction, I got my guy, Superior. Yo, thanks for the invite. I appreciate it, man. Oh, man, you're always welcome on this platform. So, yo, so before we get into this, you know, I, I, I got to ask you both. How did you first come across each other? Either one can answer that. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, you want you want to take the stage, so you want to answer that? Yeah, let me let me um, let me tell this. Uh, I'm gonna give my answer after. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, I, I would say you know the thing is that I reached him out, not he he reached me out. You know, um, for, for the collaboration. Yeah, I know that mm -hmm. he uh, 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 was listening to to my previous project, but. Um, I was reaching him out because you know it was like a, I don't know if it was a Saturday, Saturday evening, and um yeah and uh, I, I I was with my phone and uh I was you know scroll the, the 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 timeline and uh yeah and um there is a guy and um I know him you know we we connected like uh, a few years ago his name is Craig Dyer he's uh, also from Europe. And he's an artwork de designer. He's a dope artwork, artwork uh, artist. And then I saw the the cover from the Lean Line Wall, Lean Line, uh, the album with Vega and um, Machacha. Sir. And I was and I was like, oh man, uh, I never heard about Vega Seven the Running. So, um, who is he? You know, yeah. uh, and I, and I, and I'm a curious guy. I'm always curious, you know. <laughs> if there is something and I don't know about this, then I have to make my research and I have to make my homework. So then I, yeah, then I started to listening to his album with Machacha, and I, it was like like mind blowing, you know, his his lyricism, his flow, you know, everything on point. And uh, sure, then I then I decided to reach him out and I said, hey. He's so incredible. He's so good. And um, yeah, and then uh, I was texting him on Instagram and the rest is history. Yeah, yeah man. Yo, uh, so on my end, man, it was, it was. Uh, I mean, I wasn't as knowledgeable on the scene as Superior, as Superior you know what I'm saying? Superior's been doing this a long time. I'm still like a rookie on the scene um, in, in, in many senses. So, uh, but I knew who Superior was. You know, I knew of him. Uh, I actually knew of him shit, back when I had probably like 80 something followers, 90 something followers. I knew who Superior was. Uh, but obviously at that stage of the game, like me, me working with Superior was so far fetched back then. 
that's just like, man, I, I'll probably never get a chance to work with him. Like, I, I remember, I didn't hear any projects he had, but I remember him uploading uh, some of his beats on IG. And, um, you know what I'm saying, just basically seeing him working in the doll and just kind of previewing some of the beats he was working on. I was like, damn, this dude is fucking incredible. And I think at that time, I knew he had worked with, like, Ito. You know what I'm saying? Who was, I mean, come on, man. Major, major player on the scene. One of one of the, the best lyricists, arguably, you know what I'm saying, on the scene. So then uh, I'm like, damn, he worked with SD Nag. I'm like, shit. Like, me working with him is like, forget it. Like, I'll probably never going to get a chance, you know? And I remember thinking when I linked up with him later, you know, after the tournament and him reaching out to me, um, I remember thinking like, damn, yo, like, you know, it's... um wow it's, it's 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 actually happening me getting an opportunity to work with him you know what i'm saying so uh yeah i just i just remember uh thinking to myself like damn man the fact that he sought me out i think you know definitely is encouraging to say the least man and it, and, and it says a lot about how he feels about my skill level and vice versa man so hey, yeah the rest is history hey so yo, was uh superior man so when me and vegas seven the rolling man you know when we were building, man, you know, your name came up and you're the both thing we both agree on is that you don't work with anybody. You only work with who you <laughs> want to work with. And man, because like right. anything that you put out, we know it's going to be good because you're a perfectionist. You're not one to rush out like 10 projects. Like, yeah, I did 10 projects in 10 months. No, you take your time. And as long as you take your time, we're good with that because we know the, the product is going to be very pristine. So, um, how is it like, you know, wanting to work with people you only admire? Because you don't work with anybody I know. Yeah. Uh, well, like you said, you know, I'm like a, I'm like a perfectionist. You know, when I do something, then it has to be 100% uh, uh, super dope. I don't make a project and uh, to say, okay, now I got some... I got some income, you know, from, <laughs> <laughs> and from the streams, and I don't give a fuck about this, you know. I don't. I want to make great art with great artists, and I'm very, you know, I'm, you know, if if I work with with, with someone, he, he has to be uh, really, really good, really, really skillful, and a dope person, you know, both. You know, I'm not just working with the with skillful uh, people and uh and maybe they are assholes or the you mm -hmm. know rip you all you know something like you know uh, you know real dope human beings and that's the most important thing and then and then uh, <laughs> obviously uh they have to be very very skillful to to to, to work with me because um like i said i'm a perfectionist and i i don't want to to drop like other artists i don't i don't want to mention names but our artists they many like you said they they drop like 10 10 projects a year and yeah. uh, nine of them they're, they're whack you know whack nine, nine. <laughs> and, and there's there is just one dope project and i don't work like this if i drop one project this project has to be perfect so yeah. even with that now too like um so even with vega you know you being the newcomer on the scene you know we talked about this earlier but like what was like your reaction when making the line lead wall, oh, sorry, the lead line wall and mm. the reception it got? Because, like, you know, it's very rare for an artist in this renaissance to have a debut album and it hit out the pipe like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> man. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm not going to talk about the whole shit that led up to lead line wall oh, and yeah, all that, yeah, but, yeah. yo, shout out, shout out to Machacha, man. Um, yeah, yeah Machacha reached out to me super early on um same with i mean same with superior you know what i'm saying superior reached out to me uh very early on man but um because they actually found out about me through the same source so they found out about me through this bars app tournament that i was a part of and you know what i'm saying maybe we can get into that later but uh they basically seen a verse that i had performed on there uh and lupe fiasco was like you know judging it so uh Working with Machacha once again, I, I knew who Machacha was. I, I had heard of Machacha, um, and I had respected his his work just like how I respected um Superior's work. So when he hit me up to work, I was like, "Motherfucker, hell yeah!" Like that's a that's an automatic green light, you know. So uh, I remember. I mean, 
I wish I had <laughs> more of a, you know, crazy story behind Leadline Wall and everything. But I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, Machacha sent some beats. I had selected what I thought had fit aesthetically and kind of I wanted a cohesive sound. I wanted I didn't want it to sound like eight different tracks. I wanted everything to kind of have a feel of like it flows into the next track properly and, and so on and so forth. So um, I did that shit super quick, man, to be honest with you. Like I didn't sit around on it. I didn't I didn't kind of like throw it back in the oven and take it out and then throw it back <laughs> in the oven. And, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like um, and that's that's another thing with me uh, is just I don't really I don't sit on a lot of stuff. I don't I'm not really a uh, I, I just put that shit out, man. Once after I created or whatever and it's and it's recording and it's done, I listen to it back one time, maybe two times to make sure that. You know everything sounds good, and the and the levels of everything is good, and that's it. That's just going out. You know, I don't I don't hoard anything. I don't hold on to anything. So, uh, with the lead line wall, that was a, a super quick process, man. That was basically like I think he hit me up, boom, January, maybe January first, some shit like that, and we were done like fucking end of January or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, the, yeah, the only the only joint that really kind of, uh. It's probably Sage Mode, man, because that was kind of like a conceptual idea that I had. And I, I wanted to make sure that I executed it properly and, and it stayed true and faithful to the vision that I had for it. So um, that track probably, quote unquote, took the longest. But, um, yeah, that shit was just basically, yo, let's do eight joints or whatever uh, and put that shit out. Now, as far as the reception, I mean, shit, yeah. I say this all the time, man. Like, you know, artists always say shit like... Uh, They'll ask them, like, yo, did you know when you wrote Illmatic? And and, and not comparing my shit to Illmatic, because, I mean, there's so much to be said about Illmatic. And at the same time, there's, like, we already know, you know, it's one of the greatest albums of all time. But people always ask, like, yo, did you know when you were writing this or creating it that it was going to be special? And, you know, you have some artists that are front, like, yeah, man, I I knew from when I recorded. (laughs) Shut up. You ain't know that shit, bro. Like. You just made the joint and it, and it did what it did. And that's not to say I didn't think that what I had created was great. You know, I thought I thought it was definitely a great body of work and, and definitely a more more than solid body of work. But uh, to see. To see the reception in the sense of, you know, sure, you could see short term reception as far as you put the album out and then people are gravitating towards it for a short time uh, after that, maybe a month, two months, three months, whatever the case is. Yeah, that's not unusual to see. But uh, after seeing people, you know, for instance, uh, shout out to, I think his name is Pocket Fire, man. If I got that name wrong, my my, my fault. But the album dropped in March. So you got to think, how many uh, projects dropped in like that same month? So like, you got that drop in March, then you got April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. That's nine months. You know, nine months later, and then he he made like a list um as far as I think it was like top twenty, his top twenty favorite albums of the year. And he he had the lead line wall at number one. So to see things like that, you know, I could have never predicted. Yeah, you know, I could have never predicted that. So the fact that I was able to survive that long in the game a year and a half later with just one album and have people still, you know, talking about me and bringing me up. Which, Come on, man. That shit, that shit is a blessing, yo. You, uh, you said you like to like halt and release stuff as soon as you get it. So like working with Superior, you know, with being the perfectionist like how he is, like, you know, how much stuff like, you know, and like you wanted to release, like, yo, do superior, let's do this now. Be like, no, 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 no. Gotta do that at the right time. Like you guys have like those times when making this album. Mm, mm, what you think, so what you say? Mm, now tell me again, tell me again. So like, oh, tell me the question. So, so when making okay. this album, did Vega yeah. he's like, "Yo, man, we should release this joint now," but you're like, "No, no, 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 we we gotta wait." Mm. Yeah, I would say uh, it, it was like a uh, um, it it was not like, like a pro like a process a uh, progress. Okay, mm-hmm. like it has to like it has to be. You know, we. Uh, yeah, we. You know, first of all, um, we we. T- we was talking about the concept of the album because um you know i, I like to to drop um 
albums with concepts and not just, you know, uh, um, sending beats and uh, come on, spit your stuff and uh, let, let's drop it. No, 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 no man. <laughs> We we made a concept, a very dope concept um, on the album, and um, you know the the concept is um, is more the uh, uh, to 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 bring also the the, the Japanese culture in, 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 into this album, into Ooh. the sound, into the visuals. You know the uh, the artwork and everything is 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 is, is based on on the Japanese um, uh, culture and um, yeah and, and and the style and. Uh, and this is why we also use, uh, you know, samples. You know, not, not all the samples are from Japanese um, music or or movies, but there are a few Japanese uh, mov- uh, samples and uh, and uh, yeah. So um, that was the concept. You know, this, this is the concept, and uh, we was working on this, and then we decided, okay, how many tracks we want to do, and how many, you know. Not to, you know, not, not to just work and yeah, let's see what, what happens. You know, first of all, uh-huh. you, you have to, you have to write it down. Okay. This is what we want to drop. And then we was working on this and it was a really dope and nice progress. And, and now we have a masterpiece and I'm very, very happy, you know, to, to, to realize this and to, to, to get this, uh, <laughs> you know, on the, on on the stock, you know, to to that the people can 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 have this masterpiece in the hands because I, I I'm a vinyl fan, you know. Okay, um, it's all good with all those streams, but hey, streams is nothing, you know. You 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 don't have nothing in in your hand. Yeah. So um, I'm very happy. I, I can't wait to have this masterpiece, you know. Here, yeah, that will be the spot there, you know. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, it's incredible. Like, wow. I, I have to say, I have to say, production-wise, it, it is the best, the best work so far from, from you know, compared to all the other projects. Production-wise, it's, it's it's the best because, like I always say, artists have you know, artist has to develop, and I develop every day, and this is the best work so far for me. So I can't wait. <laughs> Cause like yo, I get a friend. Like I, I ain't been anticipated like a sophomore album from a new artist in a while. So after hearing mm. Vegas first album, you know the immediately first thing I did, I'm like, okay, I need to hear like more of what this guy has out there. But there's only so much out there, so I'm like, okay, well if I can't find the music, I'm gonna go look for interviews. This guy don't do interviews either, so it's like, no, I don't know more <laughs> about like Vegas Seven to Ronin as well now too. So, do you get like a lot more personal with "Sleep Is the Cousin" on this album with uh, Superior Vega? Mm. Um, damn, that's a good question. Um, I mm, personal is an interesting word. I think uh, yeah. I get a little bit more introspective, yeah, for sure. You know, on on certain certain songs, but more in a subtle way. You know what I mean? Like, um, you're not really hearing me talk about you know events in my life that have transpired or whatever not in a direct way you know what i'm saying um for instance like i you know i'm gonna just draw a line out of nowhere like shout out to, to, to my brother jr like you know uh he has a line like, his music's very introspective he had a line where he said uh my grandma uh used to get on her knees and pray so she got her knees replaced like so he's talking about familial issues he's talking about you know things like that but I, I kind of I kind of uh take jabs at it, you know what I mean? But I don't really get in depth with certain things. And even when I do, I have a way of putting things in kind of like a riddle form that you're not gonna quite know just yet until maybe later on when you hear other songs and me reference some of these same things and some of these same ideas, and then you'll be able to kind of uncover more. But as far as uh more personal, uh for me. You know what I'm saying for me, I I got a lot more personal as far as um shit that I've already seen just so far and and getting my ankles into the water of the industry or whatever the case is, and you know, some of the politics and you know, things of that nature. Uh yeah, yeah, you know, I mean but I, I think I think a lot of people are gonna you're gonna find that, yeah, Leadline Wall is just a, a 
even though I'm still utilizing the heavy imagery and things of that nature, the style, some of the styles are uh, obviously very similar. Um, it's two completely different albums, man. You know what I'm saying? They're two completely different albums. So you're going to get certain vibes on Sleep as the Cousin that you ain't, you ain't fucking here on Lead Line Bowl at all. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's the best way I can answer. Like, so, like, what we were talking about, like, like, 72 Dolphins, like, you know, like, the reception that got off of the first single, like, you know, like, when putting together an album, especially, you know, knowing that the anticipation is actually heavy upon, because Superior took a while to drop, and you took a while to drop, so is the pressure, mm. like, kind of on both of you guys with this release, or not really? <laughs> Yo, uh... Shit. Hey, yo, Sue, you can answer, bro. Let's, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you want me to answer? No, go. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, you so, go first. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, shit, I mean, yeah. Well, look at like, I, for sure, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, uh, that's kind of the gift and the curse, right, of when you drop work that has been viewed a certain way and it's got a particular critical reception. Uh, you only good as your last joint. Mm. So it's like, you know, me dropping, me dropping a, a, a project like Leadline Wall and that's my debut and I'm coming out the gate and people are like, oh, who the fuck is this? Yo, you hear this? Uh? So it's like the next project got to be fucking crazier because if I were to drop a, if Leadline Wall was like a fucking a, a seven or a 6.5, then it's like the ceiling ain't all really that high for, for, the, for the project following that. So it's like all I got to do it's just, you know, since people are not expecting that much, they're not expecting you to like, you know, an 11 out of 10 or no shit like that. So the next project, I mean, there's, there's less pressure. So you're able to kind of work comfortably and, you know, as long as you could kind of match that seven, you should be straight, you know, because you'll notice that. You'll notice like uh, with a lot of artists, it's kind of like gradual progression. And it's almost like nobody's expecting somebody's first project really to be that you know stellar or you know what i'm saying so like they're expecting uh he'll probably get into a groove by his like third fourth fifth album mm -hmm. six whatever whatever the case is so with lead line wall getting the critical reception that it got i mean shit in a way it's like a gift and a curse um way more a gift than a curse obviously i always see the glasses like half over as half empty but like it's a gift for obvious reasons but it was a curse in the sense of what you're saying where it's like all right, that's that's what's up. Like, do it again, motherfucker. Like, now you gotta like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's cool. You dropped a 40 point game or whatever. Drop a 50 point game. So it's like, yeah, obviously, it's like I gotta keep climbing higher and higher. But thanks to uh, I didn't really view the pressure in that way. In a sense, ah, oh, shit, what am I gonna do now? Like, I dropped lead line wall and they expecting some heat. And damn, I don't know what the fuck. Nah, I actually uh, shit, man, like. Leadline Wall was like, damn, this gonna sound like like I'm bragging or some shit. I I, I don't want to come across that way, but like I'm so experienced with writing in this format that like you know I've I've been it's like a, a a cat that's been in the basement hitting the heavy bag and the speed bag for like twenty fucking years, and it's like I can do that shit with my eyes closed. So. For me to do it another lead line wall again ain't shit to me in the sense of like that's normal shit for me, you know, that's like a layup, you know. So, um, I knew that at the very least, I could probably match that level of lyricism, you know what I'm saying, that I that I displayed on lead line wall. So, as far as the pressure, nah, I'm gonna be honest with you, that shit kind of excited me to where it's like, <laughs> oh shit, now they. Now I gotta, oh, they, I gotta step it up. Yeah, you know, I gotta, I gotta, you know, rap even crazy. So, um, nah, I didn't really feel that type of pressure, but it definitely was something I was conscious about of the fact that, yo, they're expecting this, this level of lyricism from me and they expected me to deliver like how I did on a patch joint. But luckily with, uh, Superior, uh, the soundscape that he provided and the canvas he provided was like, it was, it was, it was easy, man. It was easy. The first shit, the first shit that I heard from him that he sent me, I wrote that shit in like in 30 minutes, man. It was one of those joints that it just it just clicked. Where it's like it wrote itself. Where I heard the beat, I was like, oh fuck nah, I'm writing right now. So yeah, man. Um I saw you, Sue. Yeah. Was there pressure? What you thought? Okay, you 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 was uh no, uh, let me let me tell you something else. Okay. Um 
he was talking about, you know, like uh, rating this album, you know, um, in my opinion, this is a 10 without a doubt. A 10. Mm. There is no, it's not a 9, it's not an 8, it's a 10. Because this one is perfect. And uh, I, I would say, you know, Vega, he he in, he underestimated his, his himself so much, you know. He, <laughs> he you know, um, I don't know um, if uh, if you saw, you know, the the video where Lupe Fiasco, you know, he he said that um, Vega, he's one of the best MCs that he, he ever heard, and this is, you know, uh, <laughs> I believe it, you know, because <laughs> he's so he's so good, man. This is the highest level of rap, man. Guys like. Vega and like Kambada and hey, thank you for introducing me to Kambada because I I didn't hear of him uh, yeah, before but yeah he's mm -hmm. he's also <laughs> he's also crazy like Vega you know with the bars yeah. he's so, you know but you know Vega he's uh this is the highest uh, uh, level of rap and uh, uh, don't estimate don't underestimate yourself so much man you are so good mm -hmm. you know the I, I, thank you, I'm, I'm I'm always uh, uh, I'm always saying the same thing. You know, um, the the difference between maybe uh, Vega and people like Two Chains is Vega. He would him destroy even if he would would uh, uh, drunk, but <laughs> Two Chains got a label with a lot of money, making a lot of business moves, a lot of promotion. That's the difference. Just the business. Likewise, as you would destroy two chains, <clears throat> boom, you know, like, hey, where is where is two chains? Is, is he on Jupiter now, or where is he? Now? You know, <laughs> come on, man. That's a little man. Come on, man. You know, you know what I mean. You, 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 your skills are on top. It's just the business thing. But hey, everything will come. You know, we will take this over, man. Sure, sure. <laughs> and sooner or later, man. Yo, that's actually yeah. like, no point how you put that too, because yo, like, because when me and Vega were building, man, like, yo, this guy is so humble, man. Like, for him to be such an elite artist and be like, you know, sometimes you know, I don't know about things, and you know, I just, I just put it out there. Yo, that's like very rare, because like we don't get that nowadays. For when somebody you know hears the praise, like, yo, this is the high, like, what's superior? So this is the highest level of rapping. Their ego will go through the roof. It's like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like mercy status now. Well, I'm like, I'm like, you yeah, know, yeah. understand what I mean with that. But like, you know, you choose to be humble. Is it because like you're still getting your feet wet in the game, or it just it's just it's the type of person you are that you're not really braggadocious, let's say. Mm, I mean, I think it's a combination, man. Like, I'm I'm very laid back. Um, I'm not really a fan of like you know, the spotlight and all that other shit, you know what I mean? It's, which is obviously why I hide my face. You know, I, I, I don't do it for that reason. Um, But I'm going to be honest, man. <laughs> it's it's kind of no reason to because, one, nobody's obligated to listen to your music. Nobody. Like, it don't matter how fucking talented you are. It don't matter how dope you are. The, hey, whoop, that's great. whoop de do. Like, there's a 100,000 fucking dope artists out there so for you to feel like entitled for other people to listen to your music, I mean, you got to think everybody the same way you live your life and you have a lot of the daily tasks that you carry out and I got to get this done. I got to do this. I got, you know, people have uh, people are busy, man. People got shit to do, you know, so for them to take time out of their day to listen to anything that you contributing uh, art wise on the scene. How do, how can you not be humble by that? You know what I'm saying? How do you feel entitled uh, to that? You're not entitled to or obligated. They're not obligated to uh, listen to your shit. But also, I mean, look how many artists came on the scene and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they were hot shit at one point in time and they were the thing and everybody's talking about them. And then two, three, four years later, whatever the case is, shit, some some cases, a couple of months, the motherfuckers is gone. They, they done. They on to the next shit. Uh, the game is very oversaturated, man, and we we are in a time now, especially with the internet and social media and being able to upload your own music via DSPs and things like that. Like, it's it's tough for certain artists to stand out. You know what I mean? But um, it's it's just one of those things where 
like you you hot and you on top or whatever in one moment and then they'll the, the game will chew you up and spit you the fuck out the next moment man i done, I done seen like you know instances with certain artists or whether you're talking about battle rap or whatever where yo this dude the man right now everybody's riding this wave they talking about him and then next thing you know it's somebody else it's some other cat you know what i'm saying and he, he yesterday knew so to kind of get in this mode where it's like, yeah, I, I mean, of course I could, you know, I could be on, y'all know what time it is, and blah, 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 it's, it's me, motherfucker, Vega, like, yeah, I could do that, but it's like, what is the purpose if, you know, when you do all of that, and then the next minute, you know, motherfuckers is basically forgetting about you, your streams ain't as high as they were before, and like, it's kind of those cats that like, say what they're gonna do before they do it, you know what I mean? Like, if you're a boxer, and it's like, you got your opponent, and you like, yo, I sw- yo, watch, Sunday, man, I'm a fucking, I'm gonna knock him out in the fourth <laughs> round. I'm gonna do this and do all and that, and then, and then you get your ass knocked out, and it's like it looked worse, bro. It looked worse than if you just shut up, do what you got to do, and then let the results speak for speak for themselves. Like me, I choose to not say shit really like that. I choose for the people, like let them talk and say how they feel about my mm. shit. Like they're my voice, basically. Like you know, I I, I kind of do my shit talking through them. You know what I'm saying? I just put out the art. I try to separate the two as much as possible. I try to separate the ego from just the artist who just creates. I try to kind of move as robotic as possible in that sense. Even in in terms of when I put out music, I don't really, I don't baby anything really. Like I, I put it out, once I put it out and, and people digest it and they listen to it, you know, I kind of just try to keep my distance and I still appreciate the project and the art, obviously. Um, I'm proud of Damn, everything I put out, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I try not to to dwell on shit or or pump my chest out and be like, yeah, you know. I, I leave that shit to the music. When you listen to the music, you'll hear me talk my shit, and that's when I that's when you hear all of that. But outside of the music, just in like you know, in, in regular form, like there's no need to, you know what I'm saying? I try to be as humble as possible. For sure, I'm blessed to be here. See but now nah, it's on it's on you too. Yeah, I I would say. Okay, you you mentioned some some things, and um, I would say you know um, artists artists when they make their art, and um, when they start to 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 progress everything, uh, there is one problem. So um, it's I think it's not so difficult to to get to get you know in the spot and to be on on top. But it's more difficult to stay on top, you know, to stay there. Because so many people, you know, they, oh man, oh my first album, hey, it came out, yeah, war, it's dope, dope album, yeah, come on, a label, give me my advance, now I go on vacation, <laughs> now I go on Hawaii, yeah, and I'm chilling, right. and, 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 right. and, the, and, the, and that's it. Oh man, you have to, you have to, to stay making your music, to work every day harder and harder, and then to get the, uh, uh, the advance from the label and say, hey, uh, 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 hasta la vista, baby. No, mm-hmm. people are lazy, man. People are lazy. They are, they, they, they want to get, uh, the money, uh, you know, fast money. And then, or, and, you know, and, and, and I want to say that money is, it's not really so important because I would say money is important. You know, you have to live. And without money, you cannot live. But I would say, Quincy Jones, he said one thing, and that's true. He said, when you're in the studio, money comes in. You know, and, 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 and you're thinking about money. God will leave the room. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. God will leave the room. Because, so hey, talk, money, talk about business. Mm-hmm. In art, there is a problem. So when there is money, you know, when 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 there is money in the room, and you and you know, okay, I can't make big money actually. Hey, your art will you will lose your skills in your art, and it's different. So many people they they started with great art, and then when the money came in, now they make bullshit. No, that's they make true. bullshit art. That's true. Yeah, that's true. because the money sure. Sure. the money destroys the money destroys the art. And you have to be careful, but you had sure money. Uh, you, you need money to live, and it's it's it's, it's important. But you have to be um, uh, how, how to say uh, 
You have to be faithful. You have to be uh, keep the art that you started. You know, you, th this art, keep it. And don't change it just because the money. And a lot of artists, they make, they make this, uh, this, this bullshit. You know, they take the money and they say to the art, hey, fuck you, art. And yeah. That's why. Yeah. And see, see, that's very true now, too. And the way that you put it like that, I think the money, it, it does destroy the art because, you know, the, the hunger's not there. And it's like the inspiration's gone because they're focused on, you know, like the bags, the hose, you know, you know how it goes when the money comes, you know. Mm -hmm. But like what I wanted to know now, too, is like you're both men of your word. And I remember before you announced the project with Vegas Superior, I remember that you were saying that you got this album of JC's coming out. Was like the yeah. JC's album supposed to come out first? And then like, you know, the drum work label decided to like, hey, now is not the time. Like, is that how kind of how it was? Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not so easy to uh to to get everything uh planned and with a with a big company or with a you know like drum work yeah. and it's not just drum work there is the empire distribution there and uh oh, yeah. um it, it's 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 take it takes a longer progress progress for everything and uh and now um yeah uh, okay um i can say it i have no problem you know now um there is a thing that um uh drum work you know they 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 want to to uh, to keep the the names of the of the artist you know from Don uh, to shine to shine and and everything is fine and now maybe it will be a, a, a Jay Skis album you know his name entirely produced by me so one of the things you know I notice when a lot of people do interviews the interviewer is supposed to ask him you know the most obvious questions but they don't so you don't have to give the full definition of the names if you don't want to, but I'm going to ask you both separately. Why did you choose the stage name Vegas 7 to Ronin and Superior? Uh, you, either one can answer first. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I'll go first because I, 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 I can't. I can't answer this so, so fast, but uh, you come on. <laughs> I'll make you first. Uh, hey, yo, man, I'm going to give shit, man. Like what we talked about before, Vega. You don't gotta give the full yeah. definition. No, 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 son. I'm gonna I'm get the most basic answer, bro. Like you know, um, obviously it runs a little a little deeper than that. Um, the seven I'm gonna kind of omit. I'm not really gonna talk about that right now. But uh, shit. I mean, Vega is, is from you know I I, t I took that from Street Fighter from the character from Street Fighter. I mean, long story short, uh, shit, man. I, I mean, I grew up playing on. Fucking a lot of Street Fighter, bro. A lot of Street Fighter since I was like fucking five, you know, six or some shit like that. So, um, me and my 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 brothers, uh, shout out my brother Sin, my brother Polo. Uh, we used to play Capcom vs SNK two like every oh, day. I'm talking, awesome. yeah, I'm talking every day. That was like a regular thing. Come over to the crib, you know. what I'm saying we we playing that for like two hours or so, and you know, so uh. You know, basically, how the rules go when you're playing fighting games is like if somebody loses, they got to pass it to the controller. So when you got three people and it's like two people playing or whatever, one of them loses, they got to pass it all to the third person. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I remember one day, man, uh, you know how Capcom vs. SNK 2 got the three on three or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, sometimes I would switch up my squad and, uh, I think shit. I, I I forgot who the fuck I was running with, but Vega was in it. So for argument's sake, shit. Let's say I had like shit, Cammy, and then like Sagat and Vega and some shit. You know what I'm saying? So like this particular day, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was just a good day or like shit. God was smiling down on me or whatever. But y'all yeah, won. <laughs> I won like 26 matches in a row. You know what I'm saying? And then. It got to the point where my brother Polo just like he just he just quit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he quit because <laughs> they didn't they didn't have an answer for Vega, man. Like it's just like they couldn't beat him, you know, for whatever reason. And uh ever since that happened, uh I looked into his backstory and found out that like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Like his uh he, he became a serial killer because he like murdered his stepfather because his stepfather was like an abusive drunk and 
You know what I'm saying? And then he moved the star. Uh, he he ended up taking a bullfighting in Spain and this and that. So and then he fought, uh, he joined the uh, Shadow Lou, the assassin uh, group and shit. Yo, after I started looking into his backstory, I was like, hey, yo, this motherfucker's interesting as shit. Because when you look at some of the other characters, they got some basic cliche stories where it's like Ken is just, I mean, uh, Ryu is just like, I want to be the best fighter and I live for the fight. And like, you know, fucking Dazim has like his own cliche stereotypical story and E Honda and all these cats. But Vega was, Vega wasn't so cliche. Vega was, uh, uh, he had more depth to him as a character than some of the other characters. So I just kind of, um, and I, I saw my, uh, myself in, in Vega in a lot of ways. Um, and him, you know, wearing the mask and the reason for wearing the mask and things of that nature. So uh, I just adopted the name because then I thought to myself, like, if this is a person that they can't beat or they having difficulty beating and he's like overpowered, damn near invincible in certain ways, then it's like I kind of equate that to my writing in a way. You know what I'm saying? So I, that's when I just took the Monica Vega. Uh, Ronan comes from real quick, just me doing mixed martial arts as a kid into like, you know, well into my teen years and um, my sensei had died. So when you look up what a Ronin is, a Ronin is basically a samurai with no master, you know? So uh, once my sensei had died, I never took on a new master and, and, and finished my MMA studies. So like, that's when my mixed martial arts career, quote unquote, ended there, you know, after the death of my master. So, I mean, in some ways it's kind of like, you know, I felt like a real life Ronin where it's like, yo, my master is gone and I'm just kind of a, a lone wanderer and shit. You know what I'm saying? So uh, there's, there's other meanings to it too, but you know, for time constraints sake, man, I'm going to pass it off to uh, the suit, but that's, that's basically the story to that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I decided to, to use the name superior because I always want to be the best. That's it. You know, Hey man, you can't ask for more than that. <laughs> hey, that's the best answer right there. <laughs> oh, for real. Yeah, but that, yeah. but you know that that's it. So you know, I want to be the, I always want to wow. be the best. So I, I, that's why I, I I choose you know this name superior, and that's it. So there you have it, yes sir. What I <laughs> I cannot tell you more. <laughs> so that well, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, so what I I gotta ask now too. So your Vega like. Well, can I act superior? But not act you're superior. You, you you like anime? What do you say? You like anime, like Dragon Ball Z. You know, like oh, uh, oh anime. Yeah, yeah, anime. yeah. Sometimes, man. Sometimes, but but uh, um, yeah, more back in the days. But now I'm too busy now. You know, with <laughs> music and uh, <laughs> nah, likewise. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm so busy, man. I'm so, <laughs> so yo, I was, good. I was curious, Vega. Yo, did you ever yes, put like superior onto like any anime? Like, yo, yo my guy, you got it. Yo, actually, I haven't, son, because like he said, uh, you know, he's super busy with the music, and that takes up a lot of his time. Kind of in the same way with me, where it's like, you know, I don't have as much time nowadays as I had before to kind of like, you know, uh, consume a lot of anime and you know, read manga like I used to, but um, yeah, uh, I'm a, I'm gonna end up finishing the sleeve though, man. I, I got the sleeve that I started with uh Shikamaru from Naruto. I got the uh Toyota AE86 from Initial D, the car. Um, and then I got Light Yagami from Death Note right here. So I'm gonna finish up this whole sleeve is gonna be manga panels and, and shit like that. But um, nah uh i think i might have told soup about like death note one time or some shit like oh, that yeah. just in passing you know what i'm saying just telling them something about it but uh nah it's like i don't i don't even have the time nowadays like i used to like i got friends still telling me yo son yo watch this join and watch it you know how much shit i gotta finish up man jujutsu kaisen and shit i gotta finish up tokyo ghoul i gotta finish up uh fucking i love food wars man i'm a big fucking food wars fan uh yeah, I, I could go. Yeah, bro, I could go. I, that'll be a 30 minute interview in itself, man. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, you know how I get down with anime and shit. Facts. All right. So, like, even like, you know, with you guys actually, you know, connecting now together now, too, is it important to have like daily conversation? Like, like not an interview form, just like, you know, like building over the phone at least like once a day because it shows like the relationship within the music can be yeah. also professional. 
but it makes the music connect more because you get to know that person outside of me. Is that? Is yeah. that I'm going yeah. to answer it real quick. Uh, yeah. Yo, I'm very similar. Superior brought this up very early on, but I'm very similar in that regard in the sense of if I don't connect with you on a on just a human level, there's no kind of like, you know, personality chemistry or anything like that where we kind of just click, uh, then I'm not working with you. <laughs> Straight mm -hmm. up. Like, I don't, I don't care about... I'm very similar to Superior in the sense of names. Like, I don't give a fuck about names. I'm not really, mm. that's not really what I do it for. <clears throat> I mean, I understand in the, at the same time, you know, everybody's trying to get ahead and one hand washes the other and both wash the face. And it's like, it's it's chess mm. at the end of the day. So you want to make good business moves and build mm. relationships. But I don't work with people that I think are fucking assholes or they egotistical or, you know, they just, they too arrogant. They feel like, you know, I don't work with people like that, you know, and I don't work with divas. I don't work with people that kind of like, uh, you know, like, yo, hurry up. I, I You got to get me this record or, you know, it's like, nah, it has to be organic first and foremost. Um, And I don't give a fuck if that, that goes to anybody. I don't care if you, you at an alchemist level of the game. Like if you, if, if I don't, if I'm not a fan of you personality wise, we will never work. Like, don't even DM me. Like, is it saying like just save, save yourself the time? But like, nah, we'll never work. You know, I only work with people that I connect with, and then I feel like I could build organic relationships with, and I feel like they're good people, uh, such as Superior. You know what I'm saying? But to answer your question, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, as busy as I am, and as busy as Superior is, uh, we definitely speak regularly, and that's going to be long after this project is done. That's going to be long after the, the the entire rollout process and after you know um sleep is the cousin has been out for a long time like me me and uh soup still gonna build we still gonna be talking and, yeah you know on a regular basis so no nah, for sure yeah no I, I can't say that um um you know i i, I declined i declined a, a a few offers from uh from some legends because they the their behavior was bullshit and then i said no i want i don't want to work with you and and i told it uh, i told it to to uh, to a few homies what happened i said what hey man he's a legend hey how, how you can decline i said hey i don't give a fuck man you know this was whack you know this what, what he made or you know that there were some behaviors that i said no that that's a no-go and then i declined i said no i don't want to work with you and my homies they told me hey you're crazy man how can you you know, you have the chance to work with a legend, and I say, oh, okay. "That's me." <laughs> you know, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's rare. We don't we don't see that nowadays. And also, mm -hmm. you guys don't do like even like with Superior. Like you're a man of your word. I remember asking you for an interview, uh, like early, like six months ago, and you're like, you know, we do it with Vega, you know, and and kept your word, you know, we're here with Vega. But in the meantime, though, I seen you do like other podcasts out there, but I didn't get mad because I know that you're a man of your word. See, a lot of things with media now is too that when you see a producer or artist on another platform, you'd be like, oh, I don't want to interview him. It's like, come on, bro. Like everybody, <laughs> everybody in this game has to thrive now, and if you're confident in your in your craft. You don't care who gets the interview first. You don't care, you know, what they ask mm -hmm. first or you, what the public broke first. It's all about the character and characters. Yeah. Matter. You know what? The the jail the jealousy is one of the worst thing uh, of, of human beings. You know, jealousy. This is so fucked up, man. Jealousy is so. Oh. You, you know the same like. Right. Hey, I, I would say something. If Vega. Drop a new project with another producer. I will be the number one supporter of this, you know, because I want that Vega that his way will go this, you know. I want I want the best success for him. And if he work with another producer, I'm not like jealous and I say, oh, why he's working with another producer, man? No, man. Keep it, keep it. Go, 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 you, go your way. And I, I know we, we will make a, a follow up, man. 
sooner or later we make us fall out for sleep as a cousin. That that that's fact, one hundred percent. And mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but uh, it, it's my opinion. But I want I want the best for him, and I want that he, that he will be very successful and that he everything and healthy and everything. You know, because uh, everybody forget about health and and uh, and, and and that you know happiness and health. It's um, everything important, but I want that his career will go this, and I'm, I'm his first supporter on an, on his next project, even if it's not with me. And uh, I don't know why people are jealous. Why people are jealous, man? There is there is a big cake. It's a big cake. You you, you cannot eat the whole cake yourself, man. Then you 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 will die. Boom. You know what I mean? That's too big. The cake. Yes, sir. There is, there is for every, for everybody. Everybody can eat yes. a little cake. Man, yeah. you know, I, I, I hate this jealousy, man. I hate it so much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well said, well said. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, even though, like, we're so, like, I, like I said, we won't take up much of you guys' time now, too. But, like, yo, I got to ask, like, how come you guys, like, like, I noticed, like, some artists and producers, like, do do, like, 20 interviews and then, like, and still want more. But you guys are very selective on, like, how you guys do interviews. So, like, how is it like yo Vega? Like yo, well, why don't you do interviews, bro? I was curious. Like, yo, how come you don't do interviews? I want to know more about you. Mm. I mean, I feel like uh, I mean, shit. I'm in this for the. I'm at least I'm trying to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm in this for the long haul. So, you know, why rush everything in the sense of like putting out a, a ton of interviews and and another thing also is that. A lot of the same questions are asked if you do it in a short period of time. So if I do like five, six interviews in such a short amount of time, I'm going to be answering a lot of the same questions. You know what I'm saying? And that it's kind of defeats the purpose in the sense of like, yo, you could go back to the second interview and just see the the same answer I gave. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's kind of pointless in that in that regard. That's why I like the concept of spreading out interviews, because. Now I have new projects coming out. I have new business endeavors and, you know, maybe something in my my brand or my image has changed slightly or maybe the direction of my music has, has kind of changed slightly. So there's way more to talk about. Um, I feel like mm. also, I mean, I'm just fucking, <laughs> I'm just introspective, man. You know, I'm, I'm very much just like out of the way, as I explained before, uh, you know, once I once I kind of link with you and, and, and really rock with you, I mean, I'm a I'm quote unquote like a fucking social butterfly shit. Like I I, I speak my mind, I talk to people, I'll be on the phone with them for like two, three hours and shit. But um just as far as like, you know, the general public and things like that, I'm very much reserved. Uh very similar to Superior. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. Superior has done more interviews than me, but Superior is not necessarily doing fucking interviews every two weeks and shit like yeah. that. He's very selective himself. You mm. know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. and then it just goes back to I gotta rock with you, you know, because I mean, mm. even before we did this interview, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I called you up, low, you know what I'm saying? I called, we spoke on the phone, we yeah. chopped it up, and you know, exactly. So, and then I got an idea of who you were as a person. And I was like, oh, I fuck with Low, man. Like, Low cool as hell. You know, the chemistry is great. Salute. And that made me want to do the interview even more. I don't like robotic kind of shit. I don't like the whole, like, you know, I don't like to just do shit just to do it. It has to make sense, you know? So, um, yeah, that's my reason. But, yeah. Uh, I would say I have a big problem to make interviews uh, when there is nothing, uh, when, when there is no, no, project you know dropping or because uh, you know what what when not when, when you make an interview with me and um and i don't have a release uh, hey we can't talk about uh the previous project like two years ago and uh, hey that's that's i don't know man that that, that makes no sense I, I like you know if there is something you know we are artists and uh we want to present uh, and we are we proudly we proudly want to present our our new project and we can talk about it and and yeah it, it's it's much more interesting that, than to to talk about like okay man I made the, the project with Ito like yeah three for you yeah long story short, <laughs> and, 
Yeah, come on, man. Yeah. Make no sense. You know? Got, yo, remember that shit you did, the project you did four years ago? And it's like, yeah, that was four months yeah, ago. Yeah, come on. Like We're moving forward. So, nah, for sure. I definitely People wanna, they want to hear the, they want to hear the, 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 the situation right now. What's yeah. going on right now with yeah. you? I'm chilling, oh. man. I'm chilling. I'm like, yeah, I did a project like two years ago, and the next project, <laughs> I don't know when, yeah. when it will be, uh, yeah, when yeah. it will be dropped. Hey, come on, this is yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> make no sense. So, one of the last questions I wanted to ask you guys: When you first, like, you know, actually saw each other through the phone or computer screen, did you guys wear a mask to each other, or do you guys show each other's faces when it's just you two? I, I was so. Hey, yo. I'm a, I mean, yo, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. Like, I don't really video chat soup like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we basically we speak over the phone. I've never like video chatted soup. He's never video chatted me. So like, um, every time we speak, it's just audio. But it's like you know, it's one of those things where you don't really have to see a person yeah. to like connect. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't have to be staring superior directly in his fucking <laughs> eyeballs and shit. So mm. like you know what I'm saying, like get an idea of you know how he is as a person. I mean, it's kind of like I feel like I I knew Soup for a long ass time, and I feel like I knew Soup for years. You know what I mean? Just after talking to him repeatedly, and like you know having a number of um a number of, of chats with him and shit. Like, uh, but nah, we we never have. Like this is basically the first time that we're actually uh, fucking on camera at the same time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna be honest. The first time I really seen Soup was like an interview he did and shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't think shit was it Abyss. Nah, it was it was a little bit before Abyss. Um, oh, shout out to guys at the Abyss, yo. Shout out to Primo Jazz. Hey, hey salute. Hey, hey, my fault. But yeah, like I think I think uh, it was either that or it was like something else that I seen. You know what I'm saying? And um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's the first time I seen Soup. You know what I'm saying? The first time I seen Soup on camera type shit. So yeah. That's kind of mm. see, that's kind of crazy yeah. how you both wear masks and you got this project coming out. Mm. And like the <laughs> I, I don't know if that's nah, yeah. but you know when you guys first changed your avatar on Instagram to just a face? Yeah. So when the average person won't look at it, like you know, obviously I knew what it was, but somebody I forgot who posted it on Twitter, but they thought it was a Pyrex pot with a band with a blindfold around it. I was like, no, it's oh. a samurai, but it kind of oh, that's crazy. A with a blindfold over it, though. Right, right, right. Nah, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. You said so. Nah, my fault. What you saying, Sue? No, say it. Uh, hey, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm saying, he, you, you were saying to cover a lead line wall, somebody thought it was a, the bandana on there, somebody thought it was like a Pyrex pot? No, like no, wrapped no. Around? Up, up to sleep is the cousin of the, uh, sleep is the cousin. Is the cousin. Yeah, because I, oh. I, I don't know if that's the album cover. Yeah, 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 it's a, it's a, ah, shit, man. See, I can't, I'm not even going to explain it yet. I'm going to let him say it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to touch on that after, but, uh, ah, yo, the cover, when y'all see the full cover, son, yo, shout out to Artie Arby, man. Artie's a fucking genius, man. Like, uh, yeah. he, uh, I didn't give him no fucking input like that on the on the um album cover. Uh similar to like similar to Craig on Lead Line Wall. I didn't really give him no, you know, like information. He just basically came up with something off the top of his head. But uh the yeah, already smoked that damn cover, man. Like the front and when y'all see the back cover too, oh my God. Like yeah, this dude's definitely he's you know, hands down one of the best artists in the game, period. You know what I'm saying? And for me to be able to have him do the cover for my sophomore project with Superiors, fucking blessing. Even if you know the saying? rollout, like how you guys are promoting each single with different artwork, it's like, yo, I, I love this artwork. Like, I don't know if you guys do it prints or anything like that, but yo, like, this is, this is art. Like, a lot of people don't realize that. Like, they're like, oh, art is like the Mona Lisa. Bro, it is 2023, okay? A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people is looking for this, you know. So, when so, you so right? yeah. And I want to say that you, you will, you will be surprised if you see the whole cover. When okay. you see the okay. when so, you see the whole okay. cover, so. and then you, and then you see the the covers, you know, from, uh, yeah. from the singles, then you will, will re realize some something great. 
I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, I want to. Don't want to mention it because it's a surprise. Look at the cover right. and then look at the singles, and you, you, it's mind blowing. You yeah, yeah, it's going. It's going to be one of those like, oh, that's this, and this is this. And, oh, I, okay, I get it. Let's, y'all, y'all, let's see. Yeah. No, uh, and I, yo, I see. See, like that's what I, I love about that too. Like even the promotional artwork has meaning to it because a lot of people they may just be like. Oh yeah, new single out right now. You know, stream now, stream now. But like what you guys just said, if you guys put the pieces of the puzzle, this is what I love about some hip hop. You actually have to use your brain. You just can't be just like, no, you got right, to right. like dissect. Like shout out to my guy Ty Ferris, man. Ty Ferris was one of the few artists who made me appreciate lyrics. Pause, pause. But I'm gonna pause all this. But deep diving into lyrics, man, because. There are so many different ways that you can say it and it mean like two different things. It's like, the, I like to call it the reasonable doubt syndrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, and shout out to Ty Ferris. He, the vinyl will be dropped uh, through uh, Fuck Rap, you know, a very dope guy. His name is Robert and he will, you know, oh, the, he, God, he's God. the label God. owner. Yeah, Fuck Rap, you know, they, they really That's stole big. me stuff from uh, Rome Street, Ito, v and he got a he got a very very great catalog, you know. If you if you look at uh, all the releases from Fuck Rap, so uh, he he will release the the vinyls and um and Ty Ferris he will release the the CDs and tapes. So that's that's dope, See, really man, dope. So I was curious about now too, like your guys' stance on like physical selling out. Like, would you guys rather have like a limited run? Will always have the project in stock, so people that may discover you later on, like yo, I actually want to buy that. But that limited drop, or shout out to my guy Mickey Diamond, man, yo, yo, Mickey Diamond, man, you created a goddamn problem with these selling out vinyls and tapes, my guy, man. Yeah, man. But yeah. like, but having somebody, you know, always having their music in stock for like the newcomers, like, would you guys be open to that, or you guys, you know, want to do that limited release, but also. You know, do the reissue later on. <clears throat> I mean, I think, I think it's kind of a case by case basis, man. And I think it depends on who's involved with the project, you know, producer wise or, you know, label wise. And you got to take shit like that into account. Um, but I mean, I, there's pros and cons to both. You know what I'm saying? There's pros and cons to both approaches. I mean, if you if you put out a lot, then it's like you said. I mean kind of like more people get to get a, get a chance to obtain a copy uh especially in a, in a situation like mine where it's like you know I don't have the biggest fucking following man I I, I think I literally just hit like 3000 followers like you know pretty recently so um it gives people time like later on down the road to kind of catch up and they'll be able to get a copy maybe like a couple months later or a year later or two years later or whatever the case is um but also, there's there's the pros to the limited release because you know it feels more special. Yeah, it feels like damn, he only he only pressed up like you know two hundred copies or two fifty or how, however many copies is pressed up. Um, it, it kind of you feel like the copy that you have is you know even more special. You feel like damn, man, the fact that I even have this and there's only two hundred in the world that exists. I mean, you know, it, it says a lot. So I think there's pros to to, to each, and I think. Uh, eh, well, you know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not really gonna say nothing right now. You, you'll see. <laughs> you gonna see. Mm. You gonna see. You gonna see. Uh, shit, I'm not even gonna give y'all a time frame, but you gonna see. Like right, right after this joint, you are gonna see something, or and think back to this conversation. Actually, I'm gonna call you on the phone after, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put you on. I'm gonna tell you, but yeah. all right, bet. all right, bet. I like that. So before yeah. I let you guys go now, too, like. I, I love it when I see this. I absolutely love it. Yo, shout, shout out to all the women in the world, man. But yo, when I see a beautiful lady painting somebody like, you know, I, okay, whoa, 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 let me clean that up. When I see a, when I see <laughs> a woman listening to an underground artist like a Rome Streets or a Vegas 7 to Road, and I was like, yo, lady, like, what have you been all my life? But like, what's it like having like a female actually listening to your music? Because like, when people think underground rap, like, oh, it's a bunch of dudes. Ah, bro, there's a lot of women right. on the ground right now. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I would say, I would say, um, yeah. to me, it's important that um, 
everybody will listen to it. If there are, you know, women, guys, uh, I would love to that the children will listen to our music, man, because they are the future. The children are the future. If they listen to our music, that, that that will be very, very nice, you know, because Vega Seven, the Run In, and Sapphire is for the future, uh, for the children too. Not not just Wu Tang, you know. <laughs> you know Wu Tang is for the babies, man. Right. Yeah, Wu Tang is for but, the babies. Uh, no, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, but. Uh, you know, I would like uh, when everybody is listening to the, to this. You know, uh, but you're right. You know, this is a like a like a a, a, a male thing. You know, so so uh, um, I have the the business uh, the business account in, in the Instagram, and I can see how many males and how many females are, are following me. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, <laughs> it was, it was amount, so, so yeah yeah yeah. Get Much more males than females, and uh, yeah, I, I would like it if it's like 50 50, but uh, that, that's not 50 50. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's people are people, man. So, you know, I mean, on average, yeah, I don't, I don't think most uh females would be into this type of um, this subgenre of the art form, you know, but at the same time, yeah, they, they out there, you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people would be surprised as far as to like who, too. Because I think a lot of cats is thinking like, oh, the only the only type of women that'll be into this probably fucking like, you know, dress in particular. They probably wear baggy jeans and tin boots and shit like that. Like, nah, like so a lot of a lot of these women, man, you you would never know just looking at them. You know what I'm saying? You would think that all they listen to is maybe R and B or they listen to, you know, the uh, so a softer form of the music, but. You know, they listen to that shit and they listen to this type of shit too. You know what I mean? So some of them, yo, there's a lot of women that love battle rap. Like, they love that yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I mean, what we doing ain't too far removed. I mean, it's, it's you kind of got two art forms that are very close to the essence of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, me, me, <laughs> me, every time I see like a, a, a female supporter or, you know, I see comments in the, from females and shit. I'm not really surprised. You know what I mean? It's like people into different shit. So, but I I appreciate them greatly. I appreciate all my supporters greatly, but mm. especially any 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 females that listen to my shit for sure. Hell yeah. I just mm. uh, maybe just my preference, but you know, I, I I just love when a woman loves like underground rap. I'm like, oh shit, lady, like yo, you come over here. Let's listen to some fair mom. You're kind of my guy. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, mm -hmm. right. So, yo, um, I want to take this time out to thank you both for doing this interview, man. And, you know, this is, um, if you made it this far, man, the album is already out. You know, Sleep is the Cousin. Man, before I let you guys go, um, all the links for the, so you can support my guys is in the link below. But, you know, is there anything you want to let the people know before I let you guys go? I'm going to say this. Yeah. Uh, yo, oh, you want to go first, Luke? No, go first. Go first. Listen, I'm going to say, man, uh, Humble to have come on this platform first and foremost, man. Thank you, brother, for having us, man. Uh, second, man, me and Soup created some shit. <laughs> like this album, you know, not to not to toot my own horn and all that shit, but yeah, you know, this this is definitely one of the ones. It's um, amazing, amazing, amazing album. Uh, I'm very, very proud of what we've achieved. Um, it's gonna be more. It's gonna be more. Just know that shit. If you think it's just gonna end with Sleep is the Cousin with me and Superior, like, you got another thing coming, man. Yo, me me and Soup is like fucking Prodigy and Alchemist or some shit, man. Like, we about to, we about to, we about to hit him with a, with another joint at some point. Just know that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, lastly, man, I mean, I'm not gonna to reveal too much more of what I have coming up in the future. Y'all let's see. I don't really like talking shit, man. Like, I just, I just do it and then, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, that's it, man. Just just stay tapped. Uh shout out to my brothers, man. Shout out to Cobra Syndicate, Carter Block, my brothers, MTS Music, Books, Till. Shout out to my brother Lord Owen. Uh, I appreciate uh everybody that was a part of the album. Big shout out to uh DJ Boogie, man. Big shout out to RDRB, man. Big shout out to Trillis Bliss for shooting the footage. Uh shout out to Trillian for mixing and mastering the whole project. Uh, much love to Daniel Sun, man, Cam Bada, my brother Lord Owen, who's on there. Um, 
And yeah, just uh, just, yeah, man. Salute, Chawala Blossom. Uh, yeah, Naomi Hill. Yeah, everybody, man. That was that was even remotely a part of Sleep Is the Cousin, man. I I thank you so much, man. I appreciate y'all, man. So that's it. Salute. Yeah, uh, let me tell me uh, tell you a few words at the end too. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you for inviting us for this podcast. Thanks so much, and uh, you're one of the best of this of this thing. You know this, and uh, yeah, and I'm uh, very thankful, you know, uh, to to have Vega on this project. Like I said, highest level of rap, no doubt. And uh, we we created a masterpiece, and uh, I hope that the people will will listen to this. And uh, yeah, and. Uh, so uh, it's worse, you know, to to to, to listen to it hundred percent. This is too crazy to to miss this. It, that, that would be too crazy, you know. It's like uh, you have to, you have to. But if to it is released, I'm less, I don't care if it's not worth because it. you 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 will miss. You will yeah, you will miss it. And uh, yeah, and uh, what I uh, wanted to say, uh, like 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 Vega said that um, uh, I I want to wa- mention one 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 guy, you know, it's uh, DJ Boogeyman. You know, I, I think the DJs they don't give this they don't get this respect what they deserve because everybody is just talking about the MCs or or now uh, about the producers. But uh, you know, the, the DJs they they were like uh, no, it's, it, you know, uh, the elements of hip hop there is rap, but there is also DJ. So um, rap is not uh, higher, you know, like uh, to see the than higher like a DJ. You know, DJ, the DJ. They don't get this this um, this respect what, what they was, uh, deserve and, uh, and and you you have to know that um, they started you know a DJ started with hip hop it was Cool Herc you know Cool Herc the birth of hip hop was DJ you know Cool Herc he started with mm-hmm. the with the hip hop and uh, so uh, yeah and uh, DJ Boogeyman he made the cuts really crazy cuts and shout out to him and also shout out to the other people they are involved R D R D B to me, you know, in my opinion, the best uh, uh, graphic artist in the world, and uh, a trillion, trillion dope mix and master engineer, uh, fuck rap, dope label, really, really dope guy, Robert, and uh, all the features, Cam Bada, Lord Owen, Danielson. I don't know if I forget if I forget some someone. Uh, Vega, let me know nah, if I fe- forget. Nah, nah, feature wise, that's it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's that's basically yeah. it. Uh, you got yeah. Cam Bada. Law Owen Daniel mm-hmm. Sun Naomi Hill. That's it, son. That's it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for 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 this incredible uh, features and uh, yeah, I'm so proud of this project. Yo, I, I can't I, wait I, to. I'm gonna be uh, in your DMs for the next couple of months. I'm gonna be asking Superior, Yo, Superior, can you make an album of Kambada? Cause my God, you're know, like. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna that's gonna be crazy, crazy man. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, Kimbala yeah. is hands down one of the greatest to you know, ever pick up a pen, man. So I know anything that him and Superior do is it's like if yeah, for, but, for, for for y'all to get album of the year over that shit, good luck, man. I don't know how the fuck y'all gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, best of luck, and man. Hey, I, anything's and, possible. And I, can, I can't thank I can't thank uh, Vega so much, you know, uh, for for introduce me Kimbala because I. Oh, yeah. I I didn't know about him before yeah, Vega introduced did, yeah. me to him. So, so uh, I'm I'm very very uh, thankful, to, you know, to for this introducing to to Kabara too. You know, so sure, sure. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, so yeah. thankful, man. And, 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 last, and uh, like Vega said, like Vega said, just the beginning. You know, this is just the Facts. beginning. You know, we we Facts. will. We will take I, over the shit. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say, I was gonna say, yo, I'm not really concerned right now with like, oh, you know, this person got X amount of followers, or I got this amount of followers, or the project got this amount of streams, or like I, I don't really focus on shit like that. I'm just kind of doing what I have to do and I walk in faith. Like I already I already know. My path is already laid out for me. It, it, shit takes time. When it comes to like everybody wants instant gratification, but when it comes to you know when you when you're trying to achieve a certain level of greatness or you're trying to do something, you feel you're walking in your purpose. It takes time, you know, and there's no cheating time itself, you know. So everything has to happen organically, especially if you're creating a passionate cult like following. 
This mm. it, it, it takes time, brother. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna say this. Lastly, man, if y'all thinking that, you know, uh, I, I, last last album I dropped was obviously Lead Line Wall. That was what a year and a half later. If y'all was thinking I was done, if y'all thinking I'm done with this shit, y'all out of y'all fucking minds, man. Like, yo, like <laughs> this shit is just gonna get worse. So uh if y'all if y'all waiting for me to kind of hang it up or some shit like that, man, like I'm sorry, bro. Like I'm in this shit for the law also. Y'all gonna have to put up with it, son. So nah, man, salute. Uh hey, I'm done, man. Yeah. Hey, let me let me mention three homies, okay? They they were with me when when a sleep is the cousin, when, when we created this, and they were with me, and um, they gave me like power, you know, to to work, and, and you know, they it, it's uh, uh, Jules, you know, my homie Jules, he he were oh, you know every day, you know, with me talking, and uh, he gave me some power. Nate the Great and Dennis the Man is yo these three homies. It's important to have good good people around you, around you, because yeah. they give you the power. You know, and that's why I have to mention Thanks. that. Thanks. And more yes, people. Hey, if I, I'm sorry if I forgot someone, but, <laughs> but this three, they are they're yeah, in my mind yeah. right yeah. now, and I have to mention. Hey, them. And, and sorry and for shout those. Out, shout out to my yeah. guy Alloway too, man. But uh, hey, that's my guy Alloway. Yeah, oh, Alloway, man. Yeah, Alloway, he's he's the guy, man. He's the guy. Yeah, hey, he so, supports so. this this project so so much, and uh, it's a hey, real love, man. Hey, Alloway, you are here in my heart, man. This is incredible. Yeah. This support, yeah. man, incredible. Yo, LA, man, you were supposed to be here, man, but you know where we got you next time, my guy. Yo, yo, baby. Yeah. Oh, hey, yo, Shamir, I see you too. Salute. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. If I forgot you, my done. fault, man. <laughs> I'm done. All right. Seven, uh, Superior, man, yo, this album is going to do monumental numbers, but also it's going to be um, passed down from generation to generation because from the first four singles I heard, I can't mm. wait to this album so yo if you're if coming to this far asleep there's the cousin out right now all the links to the physicals below man yo you guys are welcome back anytime my guys appreciate you brother yes sir